70, Angela Martinez, tw uh, uh, 72, uh, Jesenia Balovsky. I hope to pronounce the name uh, as good as possible. <laughs> I have not checked it before. But we have the referees too. <laughs> and uh, um, referees are uh, chief referee out on the water um, is uh, Chen from Finland. We have uh, Kai from uh, Norway and Horus from Colombia in water and watching Horus' performance uh, as his application for the uh, international reverie license is running is Birgit from Germany and Kaiser from Sweden. So what do you expect from this upcoming game, uh, Thorsten? So we have here two teams that have never played each other. So we have a newcomer team from the USA playing against uh, a well-established team from Sweden, but we know from the past the Swedish team they brought in the past often very young players from Sweden. So remember the last two years they have not they not fought for medals. They made it I think fifth or sixth or something yes, like yes, that. What was quite remember. wondering for Swedish team because Sweden usually are uh, one of the top nations in underwater rugby in female matches. So um, could be a yeah could be a close match, but uh, yeah let's see what it starts. I, I think. Sweden must be in favor due to the experience they are having uh, so through too. the last years. Yeah, but uh, shouldn't underestimate uh, the East Heaven Marcos from the US. Let's see what we have. Uh, it's still the wrong teams uh, in our display here. Uh, it's uh, Black Mermaids from Sweden against. Uh, East Heaven Marcos from the US and not Malmid return against uh, Fatis. They just played. So greetings back uh, to Argentina. Greetings back to the US. Uh, Fernando is looking, is watching us from Argentina. And here we start into the game. And uh, we have Black Marriott in blue. And uh, the Heaven Marcos in uh, white. And ball is in the middle of the pool. And the cluster is pushed into the half of the East Heaven Marcos and we are already at the basket of the East Heaven Marcos and there's a first it's chance for a score. This was really really close. It was, was close. Anne Sophie well Krakow here with the number coming from 14. above. She was uh, doing it by herself. It was very, very she's a very massive player you see very athletic and this was the first very good opportunity now here for Sweden. And uh, we have Daniel Persson said for once Blackmates have actually brought their first squad so uh, we look at a very experienced uh, Black Mermaid team and they're very going good. in now from... Uh, was this a goal from number three probably, was it? I'm not yep, really sure but goal. I've seen number three, seen number. Linda Carlson here, very close, being at the basket, I don't know if she's finally assisted or if she scored. But nice, uh, probably within the first yeah. uh, minute, one and a half minutes. That's it, so it's 1-0 for Sweden so far, so for the Black Mermaids here from Sweden and yeah, from the for Marcos, it's a tough start here. You know, you came here from the USA. They, they just here at least. The main reason is to gain experience. Of course, as you see, USA they don't have a lot of chances to practice, and even with different styles or different different uh, yeah game philosophies. Here you have, of course, uh, a melting pot of teams of ga game styles, of philosophies, of of individual styles. <laughs> So this is um, a very, very nice opportunity for every team in the world here um, to, to challenge yourself with, with other top players and top teams around the world. And you learn a lot from it. I think yeah. the Marcos learn in every minute they play here against the Mermaids. And you see the Mermaids have a very experienced attack already. Players waiting on the open side when the attack comes from the close side. And then the ball is out in the open. They pull out again and then re-establish their attack pattern. Another uh, player waiting on the open side. And if possible already stole the basket away from uh, the US. Yeah. What is quite nice to see, we for example taking a look at, their, at the game style of the, of the Marcos. Um, it's a kind of mix-up between, uh, it looks like a bit Colombian, it looks like a bit s classic Scandinavian, so they have, oh, there's a second goal right now, very nice scored. We could unfortunately not see the number, but it was a very fast one. Pulling away the goalkeeper from the basket by, the ha by pulling the hand, and then in the same move in the, in the free spot, uh, putting the ball inside. But as what I wanted to mention is that you see, they're playing very close at the basket, not so open, not so forward-checking orientated like, for example, Colombia. 
But if you see the defenders or the goalkeepers there, they're kicking a lot. It's not a kind of kicking, but, but, but um, you know, moving, moving, the, moving the feet, the feet very, fast. very, very fast. And this is something they have, they have, you see this normally just in the Colombian game style. And uh, so even you see this when the player is not close to the basket, they're just taking the position. While you see here the Swedish player really relaxed with the legs. On the other side, you see a lot of fast kicking or moving the, f the feet. But well, that, that was a nice attack from uh, the Marcos. The first one, yeah. And uh, oh, uh, penalty. Even a penalty. Very, very nice. So it was. No, no. Is it a penalty or not? He was attacking the hat. What is he showing? He showed a penalty sign. He yeah, I'm not really sure if this is a. Yes, penalty. They are leaving the playing oh area. Oh, really? That comes quick, unexpected. So the first chance the Marco ladies had, they're already relating to um, to a penalty shooter. What is what is quite okay if the referee has seen a foul, you need to give a penalty. That is what the game is. That is what the rules are telling us. So this is good. A good chance now for Marcos to equalize here. We see, we seen a takeout, a timeout taken by Ansofri Krakow. So she wants to take a timeout. What gives her one minute more break? We have a question here in the live chat. Uh, what is the classical? Um, let's see. What is the question? You mentioned the basic Scandinavian play. Well, that's the uh, the goalkeeper on top and the defender in front of the basket yep. and uh, the four checker, the, the offensive, trying to get um, in between the ball and the attacker or get the ball away. So this is a classical lineup. That's uh, one um, tactical play, uh, goalkeeper, defender, attacker. And, attacker. and that you're putting a, a, a very high focus on the defending part, where, for example, teams like we have seen it in, in uh, by the Australian team or maybe by the Colombian team, this, this uh, leaving the position to getting the ball or to bring the ball forward uh, it seems like to be a bit more earlier than it will be for example for a Scandinavian team where you see often a goalkeeper leaving the basket up before the ball is in the mid of the pool just just to give you a certain impression and for example even the, the style they're working with their feet why for example in class or a normal Scandinavian style you see the player having the feet oh no it penalty and here starts. we go penalty starts so it's Ansofie Krakow on the Against basket. the order, he's. I have not seen the number, but we try to provide a number soon. It's four. For something with four. Uh, Anne Sophie is very experienced as a goalkeeper, and uh, she rotates very fast. You see, she doesn't want to give her uh, the opportunity. And she got the ball. Oh, and she's she in got possession the ball. Up to the surface. I'm not sure if it was number 14, what is uh, Jaline Carmona, because he's the only player in the squad with a four. Very well done by Anne Sophie. But this was very, n very nice defeat. Yeah, and you see how experienced she is. She's always trying to be between uh, uh, the goal and the the ball, and how uh, she managed to turn around very fast. There's another uh, yeah. timeout, and I guess this time uh, from the Marcos because every team only has one timeout each game in mm -hmm. total. But I don't know why they're taking the timeout. Or I I don't understand it too because they didn't score but yep. they can go into the game back Doesn't and you probably need that time out later they will yep. be under a lot of pressure yep. from the mermaids in the next uh, in the next time so this is raising some questions because as you mentioned it is maybe it's it's based on the fact they're not that experienced or they're, they're assuming to have two time out i think it's a it's a first or second match now for the marcos ladies uh the second oh it's already the second so we did they have them familiar uh, with that. against the castores and they yeah. did lose 6-0 which is not so bad because the score team. is now 2-0 for the Black Mermaids, and uh, this was a chance to to yeah to catch up with the with the score to to make uh, the first goal for the uh, for the Marcos, but uh, they've taken out the timeout, so both teams don't have a timeout anymore. Um, yeah, we still have the the Black Mermaids here playing in black, and on the other side we have in white the Marcos lady from the USA. And uh, oh, let's see what's going on. So this was at least the first really proper chance from uh, Marcos turned into a penalty. So uh, maybe they can they can uh, yeah do this another one another time second time why not? After the penalty was defeated, the ball is in the middle of the pool, so no team was in a um, ball position at the beginning. But we can see here Marcos uh, having the ball right now. 
again attacking the basket quite frequently so they can keep the ball close to the bottom now here there's a scramble in the, in the corner but as you see you can see it on the surface on the surface left hand side the Marcus playing a very offensive oriented I see almost all six are there all six players they, they try the to, to uh, uh, get the advantage by putting a lot of energy yeah. in the water and uh, you see they don't have the experience the Black Mermaids have but they try they they're a young team they try to put in as much energy as possible and uh, with this compensate for the lack of experience yeah and uh, we're back at the no we're still but in the half the looks like there's a cluster on the Marcus surface you're fighting right now a lot. ball is falling down and uh, in the mermaid possession and we're going for the marco basket and the mermaids are now playing uh, to uh, find the rhythm into the attack back and forth from the close side and here we go next players will I guess uh, this is what I mean now with defeat if you see this like this this fast moving with defeat is something I've seen quite often at, at the Colombian team and, and not really at any other team in the world so far so we have here now the the Marcos from the USA now playing in this in this with this technique quite similar yeah so the game is now on the surface there are uh, people fighting for the ball drops down but the black mermaids are getting in uh, in favor of the pick now, now there's a good chance now two coming down from the ground very very nice defended by the makos of course they're they're catching the ball catching the player at least and bringing the ball to the surface to escalate in the situation I think they they got in the game quite a little bit better after this uh, uh, penalty it looks like the uh, Marcos are they have more energy more more, more presence yeah. yeah more self-confident more presence in the water and they give uh, the mermaids a harder time to to establish their own game I fully agree but this is our this is our very very dangerous just to leave then the goalkeeper completely alone this is something I was re really wondering because this this was not an explosional situation there was a pe person yep. with a ball waiting a half of the field and then making a pass and there's still no defender or attacker um, in the right position to defeat this situation sometimes we are wondering how this situation can occur but um, it looks like uh, the 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 mermaids uh, don't l lost their rhythm, rhythm a little bit have difficulties to get into into the the high energy play now and uh, the defense of the Marcos is getting much 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 better and now we have a decisive attack on the basket from the from the close side and uh, the, the the mermaid player is tackled away to the surface is tackled away to the surface and uh, interesting really I, I see a uh, uh, more energized, more self-confident uh, uh, East Heaven Marcos uh, team that is going in the attack now. We have two Marco players, one coming from above, one uh, on the close side waiting at the basket and going in. So the score uh, right now, um, uh, sorry, it's 2-0 I guess, uh, still 2-0 for the Black Mermaids and the Marcos are from uh, the US. Uh, the Black Mermaids are from Sweden in blue and the uh, East Heaven Marcos are in white uh, from uh, the US. And uh, game uh, over for this uh, first half and we have a three minute break before the second half starts. And um, as far as I see we have a, uh, we don't have a display now but we have a 2-0 lead for the Black Mermaids. We have uh, Antje Franke with us. She's uh, head of competitive sports here at the VDST at the German Federation. Hello, Antje. So it's always good uh, to have Antje with us. Uh, it's a nice energy and it feels very well. Okay, um, waiting uh, three minutes here in uh, the break between the games. 
and uh, it was amazing after the penalty um, yeah. how the Marco team changed and they even attacked on the very nice attack one came from above and one uh, was waiting next to the basket uh, to receive the ball so uh, there was a good game after this uh at least if you make a conclusion of the first half, we have seen two different games. So at the beginning, the Swedish team were very in favor. They were attacking with this first attack situation for an Anna Krakow. She immediately come from above, attacking the goalkeeper. She had the first good chance the immediately in the first minute of the match. Then they made two very nice team goals. Um, and then there was just Marcos the first time they could, th they left their own half and they had the chance to touch the other, other basket uh, or the other goalkeeper. This opportunity was so good that uh, the referees um, were forced to give her a penalty throw. But then there was th we have seen the timeout, what was a strategic one to take the brief by the, the Black Mermaids. And after that, Anne-Sophie Krakow, she could uh, defeat the penalty against the... Uh, I assume it was number 14 because we just have seen the, the only four, four the we saw, yeah. yeah. Charlene Kamona, she was not able to score the goal. And uh, but then we have seen another timeout. What we're quite wondering, but it should probably was all right because the Marcos team is not really really fighting to uh, working or working here to uh, achieve uh, achieving a goal. So or there's a question it. in the live chat. Uh, yes, it's two time ten minutes here yeah. in the preliminary round. So in the finals it will be two times. Um, 15 minutes yep. and we have a three minutes break in between the games and our schedule and is break. very good we are we are very good in time so the time uh, the the game start at the time they are uh, uh, on the plan this is very very nice to see that I'm very impressed that we are having <laughs> played so many g games so far today but we really are in uh, within the schedule so we are pff, it's awesome you can you can jump in into the live stream and like here you see the second half and it starts at least, uh, as it mentioned in the, uh, in the uh, schedule. So we see now here again, Marcos are the winning the ball with the start of the game. So, no, oh no, no, it's, it's the Swedish team uh, winning here. So we see now the Black Mermaids in black, and we see the Marcos from the USA in white. And we are now on the half of the, uh, the USA team here. And it's a cluster, and the ball fell down in the hands of Black Mermaids. They go in attack mode, but the defense is, is again, it's more self confident. It looks very self confident, confident how the Marcos defend. And it was a, a quick one. Yeah, I didn't see it. it. There was the, the referee was, in was lying in front of the yeah. basket. We didn't see it. But this but was, was a very, very, very quick. Probably in the exchange. Yeah. We have not even seen 45 seconds played so far. So they just they, they, they got the ball, they jumped in the corner. And then they made any attack from the from the uh, close side. We could unfortunately not see it, but uh, very nice one. We have uh, people watching from Sweden. We have uh, people watching from Spain. Hello, everybody! And back in the game, still uh, about eight minutes fifty left. And Black Mermaids are again in attack mode. They don't slow down. It's uh, a very fast, concentrated game. They deliver here, but uh, the E7 Marcos managed quite well to get in between yeah, you know. and. Uh, it's it's for them. It's just a show of uh, their uh, play style, how to establish their attacks, and they're leading uh, now. I think it's a three four zero um, against three zero, yeah. three zero against uh, the East Heaven Marcos, and uh, nevertheless, Marcos do quite well against such an experienced team, and they bring a lot of energy and a lot of. Uh, 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 game fun into this game here against the Black Mermaid. And we're still uh, in the half of the Black Mermaid, now above uh, the half of the E7 Marcos, and uh, the ball is falling down right in front of the Marco basket. The forechecking from the Swedish team is, is, is quite nice, but as you see here, the Marcos making it very well, even they're attacked by two players from Sweden. She was just um, defending the ball and could, could pass it. But then the, the pass receiver was not um, not concentrated enough here because this ball loose, you know, a couple of seconds before. This was a bit stupid, you can say so. So now here, again, so Marcos, they need to have the ball much more to get closer to the basket of the Swedish team. So we see here, for example, a fast break of players flinging it through, three Swedish players here around. You have two opportunities to pass the ball, but yeah. She but cannot bring the ball out there because it's a cluster and then always the physical strong Swedish girls 
are winning the ball and then they're playing that game style. But the, the, the Marcos are very active, very present in the water. Yeah. But you see the lacking of experience being uh, not at the right space or uh, not in the right time. It gives him a disadvantage against yeah. uh, the Black Mermaids. And the Black Mermaids, they, they seem to have the longer reach and it's, uh, they're very good in intercepting whatever the Marcos try to do. But here we have an hour attack, four Marcos playing, yeah. going, players going for the Black Mermaid basket, uh, but they are stopped already before even touching the goalkeeper and uh, still the ball is in uh, Marco possession and they now try to go into the game and uh, be able to score. I give over to Lorena. So we see here's now the, the Marcos team from the USA here now rising a bit pressure at the basket and this is what I mean with the difference. You see the, the Swedish defender, they're really relaxed, lying at the bottom with their feet. They're just pushing away and fixing the opponent players while the Marcos player did on the other side made a lot of fast moving with the feet, like a kind of, um, mm. um, um, yeah, what is it, kicking stroke or something? Yeah, and like not Delphin. Um, so I said at the beginning or before the game started that uh, Marcos could be uh, dangerous if the Swedish uh, team uh, wasn't focused. And they need to pay attention because, okay, uh, the Black Mermaids have been coming for at least 10, 12 years yeah. and they are more experienced. But these girls this from the US... This is a very good attack from Anna Krakow and yep. she did it by herself. So she was swimming through, she was pushing away the defender first to making a bit more sparse. She she, she followed up with her body close to the basket and then she changed her hand attacking the goalkeeper by the hat, pushed him up, pushed the goalkeeper up and was throwing the ball yeah, in. This yeah. was very, very impressive and uh, done by just one against two. What is yeah, but well Sophie has so much experience yeah. and I've seen attacking like that many, many times. I mean, she's very strong on doing yeah. that. So, uh, they, yeah. I mean, again, you know that 90% of the Marcos team is juniors. They even have a 13-year-old playing. Yeah, really? Yep. And they are, uh, they w they are the base of the juniors o of the U.S. Mm -hmm. And so they have very, very young people playing. Yeah. So even... Uh, but this is quite good. So this yes, is this exactly. Now the future, we see now here Marcos. A Marco player with the number 30, probably, um, is stealing the basket. But we don't have, unfortunately, no, no sir number 13 in our, in our squad. On our team no, list. we don't. Okay, yeah, we, they need to update us that. Yeah, so we need really to ask the teams to give us a proper list or a proper team list with accurate numbers, because what we try now, even this this movement you see here with the three throw, this is something adapted from underwater hockey that the player with the ball is like going with the feet first down uh, to the bottom, like if we if we uh, taking a look at the three throw, it's like, yeah. So you see that there is a certain knowledge or a certain experience or uh, familiar situation with uh, underwater hockey here now. Maybe this is one of the backgrounds of the Marcos, I just assume. But as we see here, the players, they have an, a very good brief. So they have a very, they are very long underwater, yep. what is quite nice. They're very, from terms of stamina, you can say it's the same level than the Swedish girls, yeah. but in the- They're like in the experience. Yeah, the experience in scoring you yeah. see here the advantage on the side of the Swedish girls. Yeah. So always when they come very close to the basket, it looks very, very dangerous. While the Marcos lady obviously don't have a real plan how to bring the ball close to the basket at the moment. So they don't know how to break this defense from Sweden. They can play with the ball around, which is quite good. But, but breaking through the legs of the defenders, there's the plan missing. Yeah, that's uh, correct. I completely agree with uh, with Austin. That's what I, I let him talk. <laughs> 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 Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so we have now Marcos trying to attack. There's it a, a small little gap. And Very nice. Pull up and oh! Oh! Wow. Awesome, number four. Right, was probably, yeah? right. Uh, it, look, uh, it was Isabella Bedoya. Very, very, great, very nice. Great attack. This was a great that one. Was really Good, and that's what I mean that the Sweden needs to be really dis awake because these girls also will take any advantage. They are not as experienced, but are very uh, good at the level they are, and they are very fighty. That's true, that's true. So they, know they, they came here now with their first goal. We remember they already had a chance to score in the first half by a penalty, and now 
of course Sweden tried to to rise a bit the speed the power and the action at the goal of course they received the goal now they want to yeah to bring back the old old situation where it was a four point or four goal lead now so Marcos they're doing they did a very great job in the second part no, it's just a message <laughs> from Melina to to Wolf that uh, she's saying that number four is a signature because it's her number. So, all yeah. oh right, thank you. Because we're asking about number four at the caps of oh the okay, dolphins. Okay. All right, so let's see. It's one minute and thirty seconds, yep. and there's not enough time. But it's another attack from above, and Very she good. just pulled oh the goalie, and Very there was nice a little gap, and the yeah. ball almost went really a little bit. She really tried it. Really, really tried. She was so close in scoring, but you see that this attacking the the goalkeeper directly seems to be quite quite a successful strategy right now by the Marcos team um, maybe there's a certain struggle for the Swedish team with the goalkeeper I'm not sure but we had three situations so far we had one goal one penalty call and now here also a very very big gap and uh, a penalty for the Black Mermaids or no against no for the, the Marcos. Oh, okay. yeah, you know, but it was against the the, the, the Swedish team because they had one chance to score and was immediately it was a penalty in the first half. But they didn't make it. They didn't make it. No, no. Um, uh, Anfield V Krakow she def uh, de def uh, defeated or defended against uh, Charlene Kamona, I guess she was. Okay, let's see. We have 30 seconds and. Uh, it's going to be a win for the Black Mermaids, but the girls are doing a, a, a spectacular job if you think they're so young. I mean, really, 90% juniors, that's a lot. And you can tell they, they are yeah. very good in condition. And, and I can be very proud, to be yeah. honest. So they had the chance to make two, or they all already or almost uh, scored twice in a game against a, a, a as very you see, experienced, well experienced yeah. uh, Swedish team, yeah. even with a young. Correct. Yeah. And this is, this is also quite effort, yeah. So it's nice to see that uh, underwater rugby is developing even in the in the USA that they're not just coming here and they will be kicked out of the water with I don't know 20 goals or something like that. It's nice to see yeah. that they're yeah. working, that they're progressing. Yep. We've seen, for example, that that they have invited Manuel and Kaiser as, as uh, experienced referees uh, who came to the USA to uh, taught them the referee stuff to. Uh, to to educate yep. and to, to bring certain knowledge and it's great so on to the other see side you see a lot of Colombians they are joining the the USA league so as I understood you can as a as a USA team in the league you are allowed to bring up to three players into your squad they are not originally from the USA so what means for example you can have I don't know two three players from Europe or two players from Colombia just as guests yep. uh, in each game um, what brings a certain knowledge, a certain quality level? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But at least, of course, teams are trying more and more than to do the same level by themselves without su external support. Um, but this is great effort. Yeah. yeah. Now, be a dear. Can you please read the Riksu players yeah. for the oh next game? Oh my gosh! So we are <laughs> the next game, right? So now. Doesn't speak in Finnish. Ah, That's nice. the next highlight. I love the Turkish. Yeah, That's the top something one. Something like this, I've learned from the juniors. <laughs> 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 I don't get the entire sentence, but it's, uh, it seems to be something very nice. Because <laughs> 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 we're laughing all the time when I'm attacking this. So we have uh, starting with uh, Rimehen. So it is like a uh, number one. Um, it's uh, Ferti Leinenon. It's uh, number four, Zamoli Juzila. It's number five, Tom Hombeck. Number six, Jaro Leitonon. Number seven, Juho Alto. Number eight, Recio Lantameki. It's number 10, Mika Herkunen. It's number 12, Yari Leitunen. Number 13, Tommy Suomolanen. Number 14, Jarko Tauru. Number 15, Jim Hombeck. It's number 66, Temu Peltari. Number 80, Valtari Lintunen. 91 is Sauli Rautianen. Or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and 96, Timo Hirvonen. And now I go hope it's all right. It, it I sounds hope it's not it that sound bad. great. <laughs> now let's go for the Boston guys, yeah. please. Let's see. Da -da -da -da. So let's see the the Boston. Boston, we're looking for Boston. Yeah, Boston Noel. And there we go. We have number two, Thomas Galliano. We have number four, Diana Maiden. We have number five, Laurie Picot McGrath. 
Number six, Timmy Borg or Boki. Number eight, Sid Sipley. Number 10, Tommy Skinner. Uh, number 13, Philip Mund. Number 15, Christian Durham. Number 17, Joseph Gomez. Number 19, Matteo Galeano. Number 20, Kim Forrest. Number 22, Andrea Picot. Number 30, Jonathan Enamorado. Number 31.